and welcome to another episode of Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll update you on Ferris State basketball, along with Bulldog hockey, as all three teams, men's and women's basketball and Bulldog hockey, get ready for postseason action, wrapping up the regular season this past week. We'll start first with men's basketball, and joined by head coach Andy Brockema. Coach, welcome to the show. Thanks. Obviously, uh, this week, a uh, big game here in the GLIAC quarterfinals, a chance to play at home uh, here in the first round of the conference tournament. Yep, we've been able to get some home games. Um, the last several years, and it's great to be at home. Um, you know, we haven't won a playoff game in a few years, so we're looking to do that. It's obviously the goal, and uh, we're hoping everybody will come out to this game and give us a great home court advantage. And um, we're playing Purdue Northwest, which uh, is a team that is, uh, you know, extremely dangerous. You know, they've all their losses this year have been very close, and they have some really high-level players and um, a team that's full of transfers. So you know, their chemistry is the best right now. That it has been throughout this year because you know they've been together the longest right now so looking forward to that challenge and uh, you know we close up the regular season chapter and on to the playoffs obviously as we close out the regular season we go to the highlights uh, Thursday night uh, close uh, road trip to Davenport and obviously uh, your team played uh, very well for large stretches of that ball game yeah I, th I, I thought we did play well I told our guys it's probably the best we've played at Davenport um, maybe ever and uh, it's just a tough place to play uh, with talented teams. And we're coming off an emotional victory at Lake State. You know, we have these three road games in a row. You know, this being the second, um, you know, of the three. And we, put, we played pretty well here. We made some big shots. Um, I think we handled just them going between zone and man-to-man. -man. I think we handled that really well. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty chippy game. There were some emotions and, uh, you know, so some of it we handled well, other parts we just, there are you know, lessons we need to learn how to play with those emotions you know, down the stretch, and, uh, but I was proud of us to get this victory. Obviously Davenport a team that won the conference tournament last year and have some new faces, but a, a very athletic team and a, a team that really came in and played hard. Yeah, th you know, I think they were in a similar position you know, a week before um, this game that we played right here as they were last year, you know, really just trying to get into that tournament and, and fight. And, uh, and it wasn't a lot different than it was for them last year. And they lost a lot of nice players, you know, but they brought some in too. And people step up, the same with our team. We lost four starters and people stepped up and you know, that's just how it goes. So um, they were dangerous, leading scorer in the league and just they're just big bodies. I mean, you look at the big fellow down in the middle blocking the shot there. And uh, you know, there's a lot to deal with, but it's a nice play for us right here, converting defense into offense, which is something that every team likes to do. And then a good you know, diagonal pass there against the zone, big time highlight right there uh, from Kel. Uh, got a little loose on the defense, so he gave the dunk back. But uh, yeah, proud of the team for this one. Obviously uh, led by Solomon Aregbu, who had his second straight 30 plus point game, 32 points. Ben Davidson, 17 points here in the, the ball game. Got some good balance uh, kind of beyond those two. Yeah, it's just, you know, your team matures into, you know, what they are. And you know Solomon has just really been a, a force for us offensively. You know, just being able to pick his spots where to attack and stay in attack mode, and that's what we expect him to do. And uh, you know, two huge games when we needed him most. And uh, you know, he's just—he's really just a, from the beginning of the season to now. I mean, it's just been a steady incline for him. So we're proud of him. We we saw we saw a lot of this, you know, in our minds when he was redshirting for us last year. You know, just because he was a powerful player in practice and. Um, but got to give him all the credit for doing that. And I know his teammates are excited um, for him, um, but those are two pretty historic games, you know, 38 and 32. Obviously, uh, you get the win over Davenport 90 to 75, and you had to turn right back around another West Michigan rivalry game, a short road trip to Grand Valley State on Saturday, and, and obviously a big game with a lot on the line. Yeah, these highlights won't be as uh, good to my stomach, obviously, um, because this is a championship game for us. We win this game, we're co champs with, with Parkside, which is a hard thing to do. And uh, you know, we just, the story of the game is we got down 15 to nothing. Uh, they came out, punched us in the mouth, made some big shots, and uh, you know, cut it to I think six a couple times, and uh, weren't weren't able to get it, the lead at any point in time in this game. So credit to Grand Valley. Um, I, I said this before. We played them so early. You know, they lost a ton last year too. You know, six top minutes per game guys and five starters and new coach, new system. So we caught them early probably to our advantage earlier in the year and then you know they just stuck with it and they had a lot of energy and a great crowd and um, you know, I thought our guys might might have been a little bit uh, tense um, but you know you have to learn to 
play with those expectations, and I think it was a good lesson for us, and now we're on to the tournament. Obviously, uh, here in this game, you, you mentioned that tough start, but uh, you guys really fought hard, battled back, and uh, cut it down to five or six points uh, three or four different times in the ball game. Yeah, I mean, the fight in our team really can't be questioned. Um, we fought all year. We're fighters. You know, the, the attention to detail, the focus, you know, w when we've um, struggled, maybe that's what you could point at, but not the fight. We're fighters, and we brought it back close uh, three different times in this game. I think, you know, if the game was 42 minutes long, maybe, uh, we pull away with our first lead. But um, credit to Grand Valley. I, I also just want to say, like, you'll hear me say this. I mean, if anybody's listening or they're, they're following our program or whatever, like, this is awesome, right? The crowd here is, is loud. The players on both sides are extremely talented. Delapo, don't goaltend, please. Don't argue with Coach Fleming any goaltend in practice. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, this is just an atmosphere. I mean, these are big-time players, and I don't care what the ticket costs. This is a place to be right here, and, uh, you know, I just want to plug the GLIAC, and I want to plug these guys that are playing in this league, our guys too, obviously, but it's, it's really high-level basketball, and it was really entertaining. We were on the short end of that game, and it stings. You know, it still stings as we record this show here. It, it, it hurts, but you move on to the tournament, you shake their hand and say, hey, you know, you got us. And that, that's, that's what it is. That's what the GLIAC is. You're not going to, it's not the last time we're going to feel like that, unfortunately, but we're going to try not to. Obviously, this week uh, into the GLIAC tournament, uh, first game, as you mentioned, against Purdue Northwest on Wednesday night at 7. And a team that uh, obviously has uh, made some great strides under head coach Boomer Roberts. Yeah, you know, good system, good players. Um, this is a year where he took a lot of transfers, so I think their chemistry is coming down the stretch. They've lost just so many close games. Um, and they've, they've knocked us off a couple times in the past few years. And, you know, you like to see them coming into the league and then Boomer getting, getting them to, you know, a status where it's just like it's, it's, it's not a night off, you know. Uh, I wish we had a couple more of those in the GLIAC maybe, but we just don't have any. we got schools that want to be good, coaches that are intelligent, want to be good. They know how to bring in good players. There's plenty of good players to bring into the league. So um, it's going to be a heck of a challenge. I respect the way he does things. You know, I consider him a friend. And, you know, we'll, we'll do battle for a couple hours on Wednesday. Obviously a big game. Uh, you're still uh, right up there in terms of the regional rankings uh, with the national tournament next week. And uh, really need a, a win maybe to solidify uh, your chances of getting into the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I heard somewhere that Boomer said he was funnier than me on an interview. And uh, just to – I have to probably agree. He is a little funnier than me. But <laughs> – you know, that's not a lack of effort on my part, but he's probably right there. And as far as regional ranking goes, I mean, you want to build your resume like however you can. So any extra win or another win to build the resume is, uh, you know, going to benefit us. You know, I, I think our resume stands pretty strong right now with, with where we've been and the teams we've played and the challenges we've taken on. But uh, you want to just keep going and some of that will take care of itself with just a focus on trying to win the conference tournament. Well, Coach, thanks for the time here today. Best of luck. Uh, Bulldogs 22-7 and seven headed into the GLIAC tournament. Thanks, Robert. Thanks. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.